Alright folks, welcome to this exciting video where you once again join me in the wild landscape of Scotland and just check this out today folks, today we've come to the Memes Hill near Kerrymuir and Angus and we've come to see an incredible piece of ancient history with a cool old story and it's actually an important bit of history for geology as a whole in the whole world because some of the leading geologists of the ancient times were actually from around this area here at Canordia Estate in Angus, Scotland and it's interesting because what I'm waiting to see today is a giant boulder located on the hill here and in the early days they didn't know how these boulders had arrived on the land that they didn't understand the geology how a stone like that could be up here and then as they learned as science progressed they actually learned that the stones had been carried on ice and this was the early times they were realizing there had been incredible ice ages with like glaciers and this stone today is actually an incredible representation of a massive boulder carried by the ice from another area miles from here and yeah let's get into this adventure folks there is a slight breeze but we're just heading up onto this hill the sun's shining once again for this adventure and I've just parked the week here at the top of the Memes Hill in the layby and I'm not even sure where this stone is it's just like located up on the hill somewhere here these old beech trees are absolutely ancient look at this, there's a big bit of cement here with a bit of wire around it maybe from an old time they've been winching maybe winching from that or who would even know the history of this land folks but these beech trees were planted at an ancient time and I believe Sir Charles Lyle was the Laird of Canordy but it's like three or four generations ago because so I actually lived at Canordy for many years when I was growing up and Lady Lyle was the lady of the estate that ran the whole show and she would have either been the granddaughter of Sir Charles so I can't even say the name Sir Charles Lyle or she would have been like the great granddaughter so there's that cool like history of that local like history in the area I grew up at and it's crazy that I've never even walked up here before it's like this area here it goes from being like a field kind of agricultural landscape to being this wild hill most likely grazed by sheep and cows and I just hope there's no cows up here today that's going to chase us. The sheep we can probably deal with. Wow, the ground just looks incredible up here. And there is incredible bedrock seams. So it'll be cool to look at the rock in the bedrock here and compare it with the different rock which is in the massive stone. Yeah, it looks like there's maybe been a little farm shed or something up here even. That's the thing about these adventures, often one bit of history can uncover loads of other cool wee like remnants of history, little nuggets of history. And this must have been a proper little farm shed up here. Yeah, check that out folks. This land's been like good agricultural land for years here even back in the days of Sir Charles Lyle and he would have run this estate I believe some of this like nowadays is not Canordy Estate I'm not even sure if this was Canordy Estate or whatever but Sir, Sir Charles Lyle was definitely like the owner of Canordy Estate back in the day this is so cool folks I love adventures like this exploring places that have never been before and some of the things that I see, like, just check out this view behind me. So interesting, like, so cool. So there's a couple of tracks here, but I think I'm going to keep heading this direction. Because I believe I need to go one or two fields with. Over this way. Wow, the land here is just blowing my mind. The views, once we get to the top of this hill, it's going to look so incredible all around. Even this view behind me here. Just breathtaking. Look at 
look at this folks, I just noticed this first smaller rock here that I thought I'd come and have a look at. What, the scenes out here are just mad, I can't believe the landscapes that I end up standing in the middle of. Just check out that, proper bedrock. Seems like right to the top of these hills. You can see why people like Sir Charles Lyle were so interested in the geology around places like this. It's like the landscape's just mad. Trying to imagine how at one time it was formed and stuff and created. That's why they were looking at the rocks and realising there were so many different types. And I believe this rock here, we'll have a look at it and see. It's definitely not the big rock though that we're looking for today. Apparently the rock we are looking for can actually be seen from the Kirimuir Hill, which is like five or six miles over that direction. We can actually see the town of Kirimuir down in the hollow there. It maybe doesn't come out too well. Just check out this rock, folks. Looks like a grey type of rock right there. It's interesting to see, like, I'm just looking at this rock so I can compare it. It's actually got a lot of quartz content in it, this here. Because I can see it, like, reflecting, the sun reflecting off it. Anyway, I'm way ahead through this valley here, between these hills, and see what we see. It almost looks like a quarry here. But I think it's just the mad natural landscape. flying overhead here folks there's actually a red kite which a few years ago it was quite a rare bird of prey and you didn't actually see it very often but now you see them quite a lot so the conditions must be perfect for them here in Scotland yeah here's the the bedrock seam it just goes up and then there's another layer which goes even further up I should maybe climb up here and see if I can look over and see the massive rock. Check out that for, for a beautiful view. And this is mad. I still, I'm not seeing that stone on this particular hill. Look, somebody's built a cairn at the highest point. There is some sedimentary stones lying around here. But I think I may need to go further over. I might need to keep going over these hills. Wow, this is some crazy landscape right here. Look at this folks, it's pure paradise. There's birds of prey flying down below the level of these trees. I was just taking in the whole view all the way up to Perthshire and stuff in the distance and down in this field in front of me I've just spotted the ancient stone. It's so cool to find a piece of local history like this that we've never seen before on the channel. I kind of love sharing new things that I've never seen and going on adventures to places that I've never been. When I was walking across the top of the hill I was thinking like am I even going to find this stone? They said they could see it from the Kirimuir Hill but I don't know if that's like an exaggeration in an ancient story. But I believe this has to be the stone down here. It's in this sheep field, so I'm going to go around the perimeter of the sheep field here. And then go down the other side, so I'm not actually upsetting the sheep. Wow, this is cool. I just love it when I'm in environments like this as well. It's so wild, it's like a hilltop, hardly seen. There's just tons of rabbits and all sorts of wildlife running about up here. And on a day like this with the sun shining, it's just... A cool adventure. It's so cool that I can share adventures like this with people all over the world and tell a little story of history, which is like not mainstream history, but it's incredible history related to geology worldwide. And Sir Charles Lyell was one of the leading geologists of his time and this sort of stone tells the story of him and there's actually an interesting story because when he was pretty much on his deathbed and he was on his last days of survival he got the people of the estate to bring him up to see the stone and they brought him on horse and cart 
from Canardy House all the way up here and they got as far up the field as they could I need to watch this tree doesn't roll here folks but yeah they brought the carriage as far up the field as they could and then he crawled on his hands and knees the rest of the way up to the stone and once he got there he went around the stone feeling it with his hands and touching it crawling around it because it meant so much to him like for the for his whole career that had been such a pivotal telltale sign of the geology and it was things that the world the world just did not know about back then people like sir charles lyle were at the forefront of science back in those days and at that time they were realizing how at one time there had been the ice age and how all this land was covered by snow ice and glaciers Back then, they used to call them icebergs because they didn't, have, they didn't have a large terminology for stuff. But this massive stone's actually written about in an old book, I believe, called The Regality of Kirimur. And that was where I got the interesting story from about this rock. And it is crazy. I can see why Charles Lyle, when he came up here, was so like amazed by it, thinking, like, how has it gotten here? and the cliffs at the far side and stuff look nothing like this and there's no way that this stone could have like rolled down from any cliffs or anything here because there is no cliffs wow look at it folks a massive boulder with a crazy ancient story of history attached to it and it's the first time ever on the channel that I've been here to see it just check it out Wow, I wasn't sure what to expect when I came up here. I've actually got an illustration of it on my phone, so I might take a little look and see if this looks like the illustration. Just so we know, we're definitely on the right unique rock here on the hill. But it is massive. That just looks incredible there, folks. It almost looks like a meteorite has just landed right there. The rock's just so out of place in the terrain. And I can see why can a geologist at that time would have been asking the questions. Literally, Sir Charles Lyle traced the origin of this rock and it was miles away up. And that's how the ancient volcanic landscape got carved from the ice. And that's why it isn't rugged, sharp rocks around here. That's the reason it's these rolling hills and the landscape like this. It was all ground down and... A lot of the sedimentary stuff in the lower landscapes came from further up where the land was getting ground down and ground away. And these sheep are literally like coming my way. They're just grazing and making their way over. But I'm respectful that I'm in their terrain here. If they're lambing, can you just want to stay right out of their way? This stone is so special though. It's been so cool to come and see it. And I can imagine Sir Charles Lyle coming up here in the horse and cart and the horse's feet would have been slapping. Unreal, folks. Anyway, all these sheep are coming right over. They probably think I'm like laying a bale out here for them to eat. Because the only people they probably see up on this hill is like the guy who feeds them. Wow. I'm just blown away. Just check it out. It's like... Another thing documented on the channel that we had never seen. And it's just the view from here and the location. Now we've got these sheep coming over, tame as anything, like a lot of the time sheep are running the opposite direction. But like we come here with the greatest respect to always the landowners. And I just wanted to document this. And it's just so cool. And it's cool to tell that story from the Angus area. Here they come, look at them. I'm going to go back up over here. These are like pet sheep, folks. Yeah. Look at that, folks. We're at one with animals on this channel. And these sheep know that I'm no harem. They're hoping that I'm literally out here, like putting a bale or whatever out for them. That's so special. I'm just hoping they don't ram me. Look at that stone behind us now with the sheep. Mm. 
one of these sheep is sneezing. It just sounds like a human. The sheep from lower down the field now are coming up to see what all the fuss is about. Hey, yeah. You, ha you happy sheep? That's Sir Charles Lyles, a stone. Yep. Do you ken that? These sheep, these sheep didn't even realise that was Sir Charles Lyles' famous stone there. Wow. Shout out to the farmer that owns these sheep. They're just sound sheep, you know what I mean? You don't see that often. Hello. Hey, look at them, they're special little sheep. They're so cool. Sometimes when I'm on these adventures, you just never know what is round the corner. And like I've said before, a lot of the time, like a lot of the time, like <laughs> the sheep will be running the opposite direction. I was just thinking, I do not want to show these sheep the way I get out of the field because they might follow. So I might have to like scare them off to get them away from me before I climb out of here. Nah, they're, that's what they do though, because they're, all they're wanting really is like food. And with cows and stuff, they're more dangerous if you're in a field with them, but with sheep, they're more tame. If they had little lambs in here, there's no way I would come in and upset them because sheep are incredibly defensive when they have little lambs. And you don't really want to stress them out when they're lambing either. But there's like that interaction there, the sheep are chill. This is mad folks, it's a total mad winter adventure. Telling the story of local history and crazy geology here on the hill of the Memes. Memes Farms just down on the edge of the hill here. And yeah, Canardia Estate is that little bit of the history where Sir Charles Lyle came from. And probably when he was growing up, he was walking around this landscape, exploring it. And that's probably how he got into such a cool profession, like, of being the geologist. And it was cool to meet our new friends up here on the hill, the sheep. And they're the sort of sheep, they would just chill there. You could be sitting on that rock, telling the story of Sir Charles Lyle. They would just be sitting there waiting for, like, a bale to come in so they could eat it. So I think the sheep can't climb up there because they wouldn't get a grip on that beech tree, how it's fallen over the fence. It's pretty slappy for a sheep's foot. Yeah, over this hill there is a few littler stones, but none of them as grand and massive as that one. Every time I look around, it's just like a postcard scene. Can you could bring an easel here and sit and do a beautiful painting. The landscapes, it's like... It's just mad how vast it is and how incredible it looks. You really get an essence of the distance when you see the haze in the air in front of those faraway hills. It's just crazy. Some of the mad rocks I've seen on the hill look like this and it's quite a crazy type of rock. It almost looks completely different to the rock. Well, that is true. It looks completely different to the rock we just saw, the Charles Lyle rock. Yeah, and you can see the difference here. And as I walk back through, I'm wanting to look at the bedrock seam on the edge and see if it looks different to these rocks as well. So we get a real idea of, like, the crazy different rocks that's in one area. Check out that, folks. That's one of the other rocks here on the hill. And it's mad to think these rocks could have been carried here from like miles away from any area in the surrounding landscape. Just think carried down by the ice and then dropped here. Maybe because this is like a hill, again, the bigger stones were getting pushed up and then as the ice went over the top of the hill and down, the bigger stones were maybe just deposited and then left behind at this point. Whereas on the uphill at the other side, they would have been getting pushed harder, I believe. That could explain why they were deposited at this side of the hill rather than the other side. So an interesting thing here with the memes, all these hills here are solid bedrock with just like a thin layer of earth and like grassy debris on the top. And you can see it there. Like that cliff leads right along to the top. 
so check this out folks you can see the difference in the bedrock here it's got those pebbles with that other kind of rock between it and that shows the Charles Lyle stone along there is actually different and that is interesting to see that and compare the bedrock wow yeah look at that there's just pebbles and stuff and that shows it was likely to have been sedimentary at an ancient time it's crazy in Scotland because there's volcanic rock mixed with like sedimentary rock and that shows the ancient like times when the rock was created that's like billions of years and that's what people like Sir Charles Lyell were trying to prove or like they were realising but like the main community back then didn't want to believe it like all the stuff they were saying about ice ages and stuff like that it was unheard of at the time and they had to totally prove it with evidence and the evidence was on the ground in places like this and that's the reason Sir, Char Sir Charles Lyell wanted to come back there before he died the pebbles are obvious here within the rock as they erode away they leave those big holes yeah it's literally just cliffs that's why it's mostly just grazing up here on these high hills but it's mad to think these would have been mountains like rocky cliffs before the ice came over and ground them all down Love to see this. Check this out, folks. This is absolutely insane. Whoa, there's a butterfly going down. Look at this butterfly. It's like stuck down in the hole. Oh my goodness. It's just, it's down the hole, folks. I can't really get it out. It's climbing back out right now. Those butterflies are out early. Look at this, though. This is what I actually noticed. Look at the size of this rock within this sedimentary rock here it's crazy folks okay now sometimes geology is just like mad when you see stuff like that it's like where did the stone come from before the time it was like stuck within this rock okay and it's been worn down smooth at a time which shows it's probably been like in water conditions or potentially like sand it's most likely been underwater it's absolute billions of years of history and it blows your mind to think how long ago stuff like that was on the go. Okay, this would have been a crazy like field of lava and rocks and volcanoes and then after that as the plates of the earth moved around areas like this were pushed up okay, and the, the land used to go up like that and down and that's the reason that you get older rock above newer rock which is like a crazy thing that blew the early geologists minds how could the older rock be on top of the newer rock but that's how the movement of the earth's plates moves it over and folds it and crushes it yeah who knew we would see that in this video folks ancient times before humanity crazy in this adventure how I've been able to like show one of the areas of history where the like made crucial like interesting discoveries about geology oh wee rabbit just ran around there but yeah this bit of land we've documented today it's literally like where they could prove some of the theories about geology and it looks like at one time there's maybe been like a proper path up here Yes, there's been a proper like little dike line around there leading off towards the main road it's cool to have that variation on the channel not only abandoned houses or farms or whatever it's cool to have this stuff here as well it's like it tells the story of the land itself okay, and how it was created and that's just like mad to think about because it's so long ago Okay, and stuff like that it's just mind-blowing when you see it for yourself the, the difference in those rocks 
the way it would have raised the questions in the mind of the old Sir Charles Lyell as he explored. Even when I'm parked at the far side here, it's a proper big cliff because that hill at the other side as well is that huge bedrock seam. Right then folks, I'm almost back in my car. That was such an interesting adventure to see what we saw. And it was cool to see those sheep. Ken, those sheep were the tamest animals that we've come across in a while in the video. And they were coming in to the feature. They wanted to be on YouTube for sure. Anyway, I'm just a bit back in my car. So I'll end this one here. Thanks very much for watching. And I'll be back very soon with another adventure in the wild landscapes, folks.